Cakewalk by BandLab comes with 11 free Sonatus effects, but perhaps like me, you're not a huge fan of the way they look. And whilst that grey and blue embossed design may have that Cakewalk logo in the bottom corner, it's hard to say that it fits the rest of the Cakewalk aesthetic. But, as they say, looks can be deceiving. Hi folks, I'm Mike. And I hope you're well. If you've overlooked the Sonatus plugins which come with Cakewalk, I think that may be a mistake. So I hope to inspire you by taking a look at my favourite three. Now, if you're looking to release some music soon, don't forget to check out the link in the description down below for the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. If you follow that VIP link, you'll get 7% off of the sign-up fee. Let's dive in with the first of my favourites. Because we already have some useful reverbs included in the Pro channel of Cakewalk, I think it's easy to overlook this one, the Sonatus Reverb, which is also included. And one of the reasons you may overlook it is because of all of these sort of complex controls here. But I think you'll find over the next few minutes as I break this down, it's really not that difficult to understand. And once you do, you've got an incredibly powerful reverb plugin available to you. Let's start off at the bottom, okay? Looking at these three sliders, this is our mix area. I'm starting here because it reveals the basics of what goes on with this reverb. Normally, you will see a mix control here on a lot of reverbs just between dry and wet, but they break it down a little bit more for you here. We do have a slider to listen to the dry signal. Let's just mute the others and listen to to our female vocal with just that. When you're hurting, I'm hurting too. And the next slider is for early reflections. Let's have a listen to those. When you're hurting, I'm hurting too. So that's just the reflections off of nearby objects, etc., or walls uh, when the person is singing. And then we have the reverb, which is that much more distant effect. And the three combined sound like this. When you're hurting, I'm hurting too. Now, can I just make note of another interesting control nearby here? That's the width control. You probably understand what it does. It just makes the stereo image a little bit wider, okay? So this on 100% at the moment. If we turn it all the way down to zero, then we get a much more sort of mono sounding reverb. When you're hurting, I'm hurt. But did you know, we can not only turn it back up to 100, but we can go above 100. We can do 200% of width here for an incredibly wide sounding reverb. When you're hurting, I'm hurting. So that's the sort of basics, yeah. We've got that dry, the early reflections and reverb mix, okay? So let's go back up to the top and look at some of the other controls. First of all, we have a low and high cut filter here. This is so, so handy. There's no really, there's not really any rules in recording, but if there was a rule, I would say always EQ your reverb, especially on the low end, because we do tend to get a buildup of low end frequencies as the bouncing around that reverb and if you've got it on lots and lots of tracks then you can create an awful lot of muddiness in your mix in fact if you've got muddiness in your mix this would be the first place i would start to look at get rid of the low end in your reverb let's just do that on this vocal i'd probably put it oh right up here quite aggressively for me actually maybe about 500 hertz when you're hurting I'm hurting too. Obviously, you're going to adjust that to taste for your own likes. And, and on the other end, we've got a high cut. Now, I don't use this as much, but it can be quite useful because sometimes, especially things like sibilances, can become quite harsh when reverb is applied. So you may want to sort of control that there with a high cut. Okay, so that's my first uh, thing that I would normally always do with a reverb. The next controls, um, well, the first one of these is called a pre-delay. This is common to many reverbs, and it essentially is what it says. There is a delay when we push this up between um, the start of the sound and when the reverb kicks in. That means you can keep the beginning of your sounds a little bit dry for a while, yeah, which can really help to keep them present and not make them sound too distant. So you can play around with that. The next two controls I'm going to mention together because they're fairly sort of subtle, okay? Um, especially diffusion, which is sort of mimicking, um, you know, what objects are in a room and how hard they are, etc. Okay, so it's very, very subtle. I'm not going to play with it now. You can play with it yourself, but it's going to, you're not going to hear too much difference, right? 
it is, it is there, however. Now, room size may be confusing to many of you, though. I know it was for me at first because I thought, wow, if I want a cathedral, yeah, I'll just chuck it all the way up to the top. Yeah, let's have a listen. When you're hurting. Oh, it's not all that big. When you're hurting. In fact, there's a very subtle difference between the two, yeah. Well, I have to tell you, you can make some really big reverb sounds, but it's not here, so don't get confused by this room size thing. That really happens down here with these next four controls. Bass multiply, crossover, decay time, and high damping. Those last two are really about bigness. So let's just look at those last two first. We can actually um, control both of them by pushing this little white box around here. Yeah, you can see it's like a... Sort of almost like a joystick type of a control. Now, to get that long decay time that we're after, yeah, let's just push it all the way up to the top. When you're hurting. You can hear that's much bigger, yeah. But we're doing some damping here on the high frequencies, okay? And it's really those high frequencies when we've got a long sort of tail, which really stand out. So if I was to go all the way up here. When you're hurting, I'm hurting. Just wait for that to finish. That is where you start to get your really big sounds, okay? So, you know, if you, what you can do is do a big sound but cut out those high frequencies. Now you get a much sort of lower, um, rumbly sort of sound, if you like. When you're hurting, I'm hurting. Yes, yeah, that very muffled but long sound, okay? So I'm doing extremes there just so you can clearly hear what's going on. But those two sort of control that. Now, within that, we've also got a... Uh, relationship between what we're hearing there and the low end frequencies what they're calling bass here okay and we can sort of change that relationship here yes yeah? so we can really sort of accentuate those low end frequencies or cut them a little bit again mostly for most of us we're going to be cutting them and then finally as we move left to right we can see that the crossover but the point where um, what is considered the bass frequencies ends okay so we can control that there that's the overview of everything with this reverb don't forget there's some presets that you can go to at the top um, if you just want to get started quickly with this but it's really an incredibly effective and versatile reverb plugin i've chosen the sonatus multiband compressor because although there's lots of free compressors around there's not so many useful free multiband compressors and we do get this with cakewalk now if you're intimidated by this interface it may be partly because you're a little bit intimidated by compressors overall perhaps you don't really understand them let me know in the comments down below if that's you i'm going to do a quick one minute sort of rundown of compressors to quickly help you up to speed and then we'll talk about this multiband compressor and i'm going to do that by actually looking at the compressor plugin which comes for free with cakewalk the sonatus compressor plugin so a compressor actually adjusts volume and it focuses on the peak volumes the loudest parts and it says hey once we get too loud let's turn things down well where is too loud we determine that with the threshold the threshold control is here on the left and that determines at what volume we start to turn things down how much we turn them down is controlled by something called the ratio. And we have that here. So if we want to turn it down a lot, then we'll just put a high ratio like so. And then once we go over that volume, it's going to turn the volume down. Okay. Now it may do that gently over time as it gets to the threshold. Yeah, it will gradually turn it down more and more. Um, or it may do it instantly. And that's controlled with the knee. And if we adjust the knee control, you can see this is what they call a hard knee. So once it goes over the threshold, it turns it down right away. Um, but a soft knee would gradually turn it down more and more as we go over that threshold. Okay, so that's the first few things we need to understand about compressor. How quickly we turn it down. Yeah, how quickly after we go over that threshold do we turn it down is controlled with the attack control. Yeah, that's down here at the bottom. And then finally, once we go back below the threshold, once the sound gets quieter again, when do we return our compressor back to its normal state and letting all the sound through? That's controlled with the release, that amount of time. Okay, so that's a crash course in compression. Now, how does this work within the uh, plugin I want to focus on? The multiband plugin. Well, you can think of this plugin as the one we were just looking at, but five of them, and each of them focuses on a different area of frequencies, a different range of 
frequencies, okay? Now, at the bottom, you can see those five different zones, yeah? And we can control exactly where those zones begin and end by just pushing these sliders around, yeah? Now, when we first load this plugin up, it's going to be with this tab over here set to COM. We're going to see all of the controls for all of the different bands or ranges all there. That can look a bit sort of nerdy and complicated, can't it? But if we just go into one of these uh, bands at the top here and we start to adjust the threshold by dragging a slider like so, then this area actually, the bottom right, area here um, changes to controls just for that particular band that we're adjusting okay so if we wanted to for example just you know control the low end of the volume of the low end of a sound then we would do that with this band yeah and we can adjust the the threshold as we did and we can then go ahead and adjust the ratio the attack and the release okay so that's essentially how we use this plugin we can click on the different bands like so let's reset it and have a listen to this acoustic guitar but pay attention to the percussive element of this acoustic guitar where i'm kind of hitting it did you hear the last one there it was much louder than the others have a listen again And that's the kind of thing we may want to control with a multiband compressor. There's actually many uses, but this is just one example. So what I would do here is think to myself, right, most of that slapping sound is actually in the higher frequencies, yeah, perhaps in these top two bands of frequencies. I'm going to go for the highest one, first of all, with that very high sort of snap to the sound. I'm just going to bring that threshold down to a point where I think that that slap goes over the threshold yeah I'm just going to move the playhead forward so we're just hearing that yeah so it goes well over the threshold just there so let's just we we'll just quickly we'll just grab the ratio and we'll just slam it down so it's just completely crushing that uh sound right when it goes above that threshold Okay, it's getting there. I think I probably want a hard knee, so it's implemented right away. And a very quick attack here, almost instant attack, and also a fairly quick release. Let's have a listen now. Okay, that's not too bad. That's a part of it. But there's some other information in this band, I think. I'm just going to drag that threshold down here. Doing this real quick, by the way, guys, is I would take a bit more care um, and normally on this, but we'll just do it real quick now. We'll pop that knee down again. Yeah, we'll do a, a quicker attack. Get the, sorry, turn that ratio down and then give it a hard knee. Have a listen now. Okay, I'm just going to push that up a little. Okay, now it's still there and it's still louder than the other slaps, but it's just not so extreme yet. It's not poking out quite so much. Have a quick listen with a bit more context with a few slaps before. Okay, now let's bypass and see what we started off with originally. Okay, so you can hear quite a reasonable difference there. So I could, you know, delve into this in more detail and probably get a little bit more control over that. But you get the idea. Now, why would I do that? Why would I not just grab an EQ and then reduce those frequencies so we're not hearing those high slaps? Well, the problem with that would be it would reduce the high frequencies for all of the rest of the performance. So all that nice sparkly end of the guitar, that airy end of the guitar, would all start to sound a little bit more muffled for the rest of the performance so this is when we just want to control a certain frequency range a bit like we would with an eq but momentarily when it gets too loud an incredibly useful plugin talking about multi-band maybe you've got multiple band members and if you do release some music you want to equally split the funds between each of you right how about that for a segue Let's imagine I'd worked with my good friend Joe Bloggs on a recent single I'd released through DistroKid and I want to make sure that he gets paid for his part in the project. Here on my DistroKid account I'll just go to splits up at the top here, click on that and it brings up this page where I need to select a release. So Joe worked with me on this song, I'll never know and I click on next. Okay, so it brings up this page. At the moment, you can see that I'm getting 100% of the revenue share. Woohoo! I do want to make sure that me and Joe stay friends, so I want to make sure he gets his 
part for the project. So I'll click on add collaborator and then add in Joe's email address like so. Now I can select an amount of revenue share to be paid to Joe with this drop down. So let's say, look, Joe was getting 20% here for his input. It automatically adjusts mine to 80% here. And then if I continue with this split, if Joe's already a member, he'll get an email. But if he's not a, a member, he will get an email and he'll ov have the opportunity to join DistroKid uh, for 50% off of the normal fee. So it's going to be less than $10 so that he can go ahead and collect his share of the revenue. Now, apart from regular percentage splits like that, we can also do recoupments. Perhaps Joe paid $100 up front for some piece of equipment for the recording, in which case we can click on add recoupments here and we can reimburse him his $100. Let's make sure we get that correct. And then after that, he will get his 20%. Very easy to do here on DistroKid. Do you know, it's amazing to me that although I own many commercial delay plugins, I keep coming back to this one. Why? Because it just does what I want in a very straightforward manner, especially when I've got an idea in my head about what I want to achieve. Now I'm going to apply it to this acoustic guitar. Have a listen. <laughs> I'm going to start off by trying to replicate those early reflections that we heard in uh, the reverb plugin earlier. But here I'll have a lot more control over what's happening here. Yeah? So I'm going to want some very short uh, delays. I want only one repeat and I want it to be slightly different for the left and right channels. OK, so let's go and set that up because I want it to be really short. I don't want it to be based on um, beats per minute or anything musical. I want to work in milliseconds. So I need to go down to the bottom here. You see where it says tempo sync at the moment. It's set to manual, which means everything's going to be based on 120 beats per minute. If I click it once, it goes to host. That's going to then be based on the uh, tempo of the door that we're working in, Catewalk, of course. All right. So that's set to 120 in my door. Sorry, 110 in my door at the moment. Don't want that. I want to work in milliseconds. So I'll click it again. It goes to off. OK, that means up here at the top, I can set my delay times in milliseconds. Now, I want them to be different, the left and the right channel. So I'm going to click this button. So link is switched off. All right, so now I can adjust the left and the right channel separately. I want a really quick delay, yeah? So I'm going to drag this all the way down to around about, what have we got there? About seven milliseconds. On the other side, I want it to be a bit different, yeah? So I'm going to go to, I don't know, what about, about 15 or so, that's fine. I just want one repeat on each side. So I'm going to put the feedback control down to zero. Zero controls the number of repeats. Feedback controls the number of repeats. And when it's set to zero, it's just one repeat. OK, cross feed it controls the interaction between the left and right channels. I don't want that. So I'm going to turn that down. And then finally, we've got mix, which is the blend between the dry signal and the delay. OK, so that's my basic setting for a quick sort of um, early reflection style of delay. Let's have a listen, and see how it sounds. <laughs> So right away, it's giving that guitar a bit of space. Do you want to hear how it sounded before? It's like this. Very kind of dead studio sound, yeah? Turn it on. So it's actually quite subtle. It creates a bit of space. I quite like it. If we wanted a bit more of a kind of a slap dap, slap dap, <laughs> slap back delay. I can't speak today. My words are waddled. All right, we'll just push this up a little bit. Have a listen. Yeah, that's more your sort of slap back delay kind of sound. Awesome. And then, of course, we can work into much more creative delays. We can link them to the tempo of the project, of course, as I said earlier. Um, and then we start to work in um, with the factors up here in terms of musical timings. OK, so we could, for example, set this to one six. Uh, let's set this one to uh, one eight. We'll put a little bit more feedback in there like so a bit of interaction between the left and the right channels have a listen to this push those feedback up a bit yeah so just it really it just is a very straightforward uh plug-in to use and just very quickly of course 
it's starting to sound a bit muddy there. So of course I would use the low cut. We've got a high cut as well, but I would use the low cut to get rid of some of that muddiness. Have a listen. Don't ignore this plugin. Now earlier we talked about the multi-band compressor and I gave you a quick explanation of what a compressor does. This is a topic which often confuses people, sometimes for a few weeks when they start out, sometimes for a few years. If you feel confused about compression, you don't know where to start, then I highly recommend you watch this video right here. I made this just for you.